Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to thank you all so much for joining us tonight for Bible study at Jerusalem Baptist Church. The Lord has been kind to us and we are excited about the opportunity to be able to teach the word of God tonight. Let's go ahead and, and greet each other in the name of the Lord. Go ahead and get your um, notes downloaded. They are available on the website, jbchopkins.org forward slash Bible study. And we're going to get into this word tonight. I'm excited to be able to share um, what the Lord has put in our heart um, to impart unto you all tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. As you're doing that, I want to remind you all just a couple of brief announcements for those that are out there. I want to remind you all that this coming Sunday um, at JBC, we will be celebrating um, with our seniors and providing them with gifts. Um, we'll have Be Nice Day and also JBC Cares, our community nonprofit arm, will be um, giving gift bags to all the seniors. Amen. So we, we're excited and thank God for those that are able to um, be a part of the ministry and still active and just just whatever you do for God, we thank God for you. So this Sunday between 1230 and 1 um, that will be done and we give God praise for those that are going to participate. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's get into the word tonight. Let's continue to greet each other in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Sister Lisa, God bless you. Good to have you with us tonight. Amen. Sister Avon, I see you. God bless you. Sister Vonda, God bless you. We continue to pray for you and your family. Amen. Sister Steen, God bless you. Thank you all for joining us. Amen. So many others that are coming on now. We see you. Those that didn't put a comment, we still see you and we thank God for you. Amen. Let's go to work. Let's get into the word. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We give you glory, honor, and praise for the power and the anointing to teach and preach the word of God. And we believe by faith that we're better because we come together tonight to study your word. Now, God, speak in us and through us, Lord God, and let us leave this Bible study tonight with clarity and understanding. In Jesus' name, we thank you, and we worship you and adore you. Amen. 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 All right, y'all. So if you have the notes from from my Bible study, I'm going to pull them up for for my particular viewing. Amen. Uh, we talked last week about worship and what it means to really worship God. I talked to you all about um, dynamics of worship, and we talked um, about many things about how important it is that we worship God in spirit and in truth. And oftentimes when we say we're worshiping God, sometimes we're actually not worshiping God. We're just going through motions. God is not interested in our motions. God is most interested in us giving him the glory and honor that are due unto his name. Amen. So as we worship God, uh, we want to do a couple of things. First of all, we want to make sure that our worship, it first of all, has to be real. Amen. Are we real about our worship? Does our worship cost us something? Or are we just going through motions? Is there a cost involved in this thing we call worship? Or are we just going through motions? Amen. And so as we continue um, to talk tonight, we're going to turn the corner a little bit and we're going to begin to talk um, from the topic of wise worship. Wise worship. And we say the word wise, uh, a lot of things come to mind. And um, the first thing being wisdom. And yes, there is a certain wisdom that we must have as we worship God. We don't just worship God ignorantly, but we have to be wise about how we worship. As we told you last week, you remember in the book of Exodus, as God gave Moses the, com the commandments, the first thing he said, you know, I, I am God. He said, you will worship me only. You won't worship anything that looks like me. You won't worship anything that, that's made by hands, but you will worship me. And you won't worship what other folk are worshiping. You will worship me and me alone. Then he tell, told us that he's a jealous God. And in other words, God says, no, I'm not going to share my worship and I'm not going to share my glory with anybody else. I'm a jealous God. Amen. And talked about how he visits the um, that that sin, that curse to the many generations if we don't worship him as we should and, and if we don't do right by God. But one of the things that we have to understand as we worship God is that we have to be wise about it. OK, OK. Um, for, give you a couple of examples. When you worship God, um, there's a certain wisdom that comes from knowing God. Amen. And so that's the wisdom that we're talking about tonight. As we get into this word tonight, we want to talk about wise worship. 
And if you look at your notes tonight, um, the last thing that we did not get to cover last week was developing a culture for worship, a culture of worship. In other words, cult, worship has to be in our culture. Amen. My goodness, God bless. I see so many of y'all in now. God bless Sister Regina, Sister Yvette, First Lady is in the house. Amen. Uh, Sister Adrian, God bless you. Sister Rosa, God bless you. Thank y'all so much for joining us. Amen. Worship um, involves culture. And, and many of us don't realize the power of, of culture. Um, I'm going to take just a few moments and, and just share with you um, what culture really is and, and how how significant um, culture can be when we start talking about worshiping God. Um, this was actually on your outline for last week, um, but we just weren't able to cover it. So let's look at this thing called culture. I want you to type in the comment section. When you hear the word culture, what do you think that, that actually means? What is, what is culture to you? What does it mean when you hear the word culture? Come on, y'all pop that in the comment section for me very quickly. Praise God. As you're doing that, I know it takes a, a little, little bit of a delay. Watch this. And I use Wikipedia. There's so many definitions, but one um, that that really uh, was was really profound to me is, is it encompasses the behavior and the norms of us of a people. OK, so when we take up when we think about culture, um, it, it deals with the behavior the way we act, what we do, and the motivations behind why we do what we do, okay? Um, now, when you think about culture, let's see what you guys had to say. Um, something that's common to a group, stereotype, absolutely. Brother Spain, God bless you, sir. Sister Daisy, God bless you. Sister Vonda, amen. So it's it's something that's common to a group. It's something that that we do, okay? Now, keep that in mind, okay? Um, it Culture motivates, culture is behind a lot of um, the way you even think about things, um, because um, in your culture, for instance, in certain cultures, um, um, when a woman marries a man, um, the woman typically in their culture takes the man's last name. Well, that's not the case in all cultures around the world. OK, there are different customs in, in, in different cultures. OK, um, but culture sets about a certain set of norms. OK, and these norms are what kind of govern a society and, and govern a people. Okay. So, um, some things as believers, I'm going somewhere with this. Oh, y'all know I'm going to pull the okie doke in a minute. Some things as believers, um, that should be in our culture ought to be normative. They ought to be normal. Okay. It shouldn't be odd for you to lift your hands to God. It shouldn't be odd for you to say, thank you, Jesus. It shouldn't be odd for you to say the Lord has been good to me. It should not even be odd for you to talk about the goodness of God or even talk about God, because if you have developed a culture, come on, someone, uh, uh, Sister Vanzella said the, the one was how someone was brought up. Absolutely. Amen. If you've developed a culture for something, it's not uncommon. It's actually normal. And as a matter of fact, when people come along and they don't do what you norm normally do, um, you look at them like they're crazy. Let's think about that in terms of our churches. Even our churches, our churches have cultures. And, and as a matter of fact, in many cases in denominations, there can be a, a culture um, in how we worship God. Amen. If you think about it, it's a culture in how we do what we do. Well, I want to ask you a challenge y'all tonight. What is your culture when it comes to worshiping God? Do you have have you developed a culture to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Now, I'm not talking about what we do on Sunday morning. I'm talking about what you do every day. Have you developed a culture to give God praise? Have you developed a culture to worship God? That's a question that only you and God can answer. Amen. Amen. Let's look at a couple of things in scripture. Um, as you look at your outline, one of the things you see on your outline is whatever you place most before you is what eventually takes the deepest roots in you. Let me say that again. Whatever you place most before you is what eventually takes the deepest root in you. OK, so so whatever you focus it on, whatever has your eye, whatever has your attention, that thing, my brother, that thing, my sister, is the thing that so often that you're going to focus on. And it's so often the very thing that you're going to worship. 
If I spend five minutes with you, I'll learn a lot about you. Not by not by how you look, but I'll learn so much more about you by what you talk about. Why is that the case? Because often what we put before us most is what's most important to us. And if it's not important to you, you're not going to waste your time talking about it. Come on, somebody. So now if I spend time with you and you and you don't ever talk about the goodness of God, then that automatically lets me know that there's something about you that you don't have a culture for worshiping God. You may have a religious practice of going to church, but I'm talking tonight about having a culture that you worship God. That is in your nature to give the king of kings glory, honor and praise. Come on, somebody. What, how, how do you worship God? Do you worship him because you know you should? Or do you worship God because you've developed a culture to give God glory, honor, and praise? Amen. We have some challenges here, but God is so good. We're going to keep on going anyway in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So look at Deuteronomy chapter 6. I want you to focus your attention on Deuteronomy chapter number 6. And we're going to look at verses 5 through 10. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 5 through 10. Let's look at what God says to us about what I'm talking about right now. The word of God says, now, let me go to verse 5. Thank you, Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently. And it's talking about culture. This is how we develop culture. You have to cultivate culture. The same thing, think about it. When we talk about raising children, what we're actually doing is we're cultivating certain behaviors and mannerisms in our children. That's why when a child grows up and they never know how to say, yes, ma'am, no, sir, it's not the child's fault. It's because the child has not been taught to do those things and has not been raised in a culture where that's expected. Now, the moment that you let them go, yeah, uh uh-huh, whatever, and then you begin to allow that, then you begin to shift um, the culture around that child. And so don't get mad later on when the child can't do a job interview because they have no manners because you didn't give them the culture necessary to cultivate that in them. So when we talk about culture, we're talking about the things that we're cultivating in a child or in any any person. Okay, this is what Deuteronomy is talking about. God says to through the man of God, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. Okay, keep on going. Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine head, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. In other words, you're coming and you're going. These are the things that you're going to be emphasizing and focusing on with your children. Okay, that's how you cultivate a child. Bible tells us to train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they get older, they will not depart from it. Didn't say they wouldn't act a little crazy sometime. But because you gave them the right culture, come on, somebody, that thing has been developed inside of them. And eventually it's got to come out of them. Glory to God. I'm trying to go somewhere with this. All right. Look at verse number 10. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities when thou which thou buildest not. This says and he goes on and says it's so important how we develop that culture. Okay. So, so I want to carry somebody tonight. I know, I know it may not seem like your efforts are paying off, but trust me, God is not a man that he should lie. If he said he's going to do something, he will make it good and bring it to pass. You just got to follow the principles of God. Okay. Now we must determine that we won't settle for anything less than genuine worship. The way that you develop a culture of worship, first of all, you got to make up your mind that the counterfeits no longer interest you, that you only want what God wants you to have. You only want to worship God the right way. That's there's a right way and a wrong way to worship God. There are many people that say they're worshiping God, but they're not worshiping God in spirit and in truth. They're worshiping God out of their intellect, out of their knowledge. Or in some cases, they go to church to get worship themselves. Because they have more money, they have more status, they have this or that. And so it's all about them. The reality is we worship God 
um, because we have to make up our mind. I'm not going anywhere else. I'm going to give God praise. And get this, y'all. When you have a culture of worship, when trouble comes, the first thing you run to is to lift your hands to God. When something goes wrong in your life, you don't run away from God. You run to God because that's all you know. You just know to worship him. You've developed a culture to worship God, of worshiping God. Let me show you some scripture. All right. Let's keep on digging a little bit. First Kings chapter 18. And I want you to fix your attention on verse number 21. First Kings chapter 18. Let's look at verse number 21 as we look at this word together. Amen. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. If it be Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. Elijah just peep this, peep their, pull their coattail, say, yo, how long y'all going to do this? How long you going to say you're going to serve God, but then you falling behind the devil? How long you going to worship, say you're worshiping God, but yet your life living says you're worshiping everything but God? Elijah simply said to them, he said, look, if, if God is God, follow him. Or in other words, worship him. But if, the, if Baal is your God, follow him. People didn't have anything to say. See, it's hard sometimes when, when someone peeps our card and, and calls us on the rug and says, hey, um, if you're going to really serve God, you need to really serve God. One of the things I tell people all the time is when we serve God, we ought to serve God with integrity. That means that we say what we mean, we mean what we say. When I say I will worship God, let me tell you something. It's easy to worship God when you get what you want or when things look good in your life. But can you worship God when you're broken? Can you worship God when you just lost a loved one? Can you say, God, I'm hurt right now. This thing hurts. I don't like how I'm feeling right now. But can you do what you do? David dusted himself off and went and worshiped God. Come on, somebody. Come, can you worship God in the middle of the worst time of your life? And for, 20, for many people, 2020 has been a terrible year. But have, how have you done with worshiping God? Have you continued to give God glory? Or have you checked out on God because things didn't go well with your worldly stuff? Something to think about. All right, let's keep on going. So Joshua picks it up in Joshua chapter 24. And I want you to look at verse number. We're going to start at verse number uh, 15. That's really just only one verse. Let me go back to verse 14. Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. In other words, God says through Joshua, hey, it's time to get serious with God. It's time for y'all to put away all the other gods. And Joshua talking to the people, put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve you the Lord. In other words, put away all the guys that didn't get you nowhere. Oh my God. You hear what God is saying? Those same guys that kept you on the other side, those same guys that never got you delivered. Those same guys that never got you your breakthrough. Those same guys that kept you in bondage. Uh, those same guys that never, saw, you never saw the light of day. You were always working hard. And yet we continue in many cases to serve those guys. Joshua said, yo, it's time to let that stuff go. He said, your father served these other guys on the other side of the flood. And in Egypt, it's time that you make up your mind. You're going to put all those guys away, those false guys, those little G's that we talked about. And, and you're going to serve the Lord. But let's keep on reading. Now look at the next verse. Look at verse 15. See, verse 15 is the one everybody talks all the time. Oh, but 15 has no meaning unless you understand 14. 15 says, and if it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord. So in other words, Joshua first told them, first of all, if you're going to serve God, you're going to worship God, you got to put away all your little G's. Now, if that's too hard, that's what he's saying. If that seems like it's too much for you to do, if it seems too evil for you to serve the Lord, then you choose this day whom you're going to serve because you're not going to have served God and have served the devil. You got to be all in or all out. Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. Because because watch this, even though you're not as bad off as you used to be on the other side, you still ain't where you're going to be because we're still in the land of the Amorites. 
in whose land you dwell. God says, watch what he's saying. He's saying, you got to worship me in the, in the most difficult place. You also got to worship me in the transitional place. Mm, mm, mm. This is good stuff for my own self. You got to worship me in the most difficult place. You got to be able to worship me in the transition place. And then look at what he says. Uh, Joshua says, but as for me and my house, oh yeah, we're going to serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. So in other words, they made a commitment that day that they were going to serve God. But notice what Joshua's challenge was in the in the bad in your bad place, in your transitional place and in the place you're going to. Are you going to worship God? That's the thing we got to do. Sister Regina, you absolutely spot on. I will bless the Lord at all times. This ain't this ain't about when it's convenient. It's about at all times. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you for that scripture. Praise God. All right, let's keep moving. And one more scripture and we'll move on to the next point. Matthew chapter four, Matthew chapter four. And I want you to fix your attention, uh, Matthew chapter four. And we're going to look at verse number 10. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew four and 10. Then saith Jesus unto him, get thee from hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. I'm not going to worship any other person. I'm only going to serve the Lord. Amen. You got to make up in your mind. You ain't going nowhere. Come on, somebody. I, I'm, I'm telling y'all the enemy will try to make the, this whip us during this time of the year. Some of us um, in, in, a, in this this holiday season means something totally different in the natural. Oh, but in the supernatural. Ain't no, there's, there's no changes on the throne of God. God is still in control. God is still sovereign. He's still worthy to be praised. And I made up my mind. I refuse to have a pity party. I'm going to give God glory. I'm going to worship the Lord for who he is in my life. Amen. Amen. All right. So now that, that covers talking about developing a culture of worship. It starts at home. It, it starts in our minds, our ideology. Um, do we have God ideas? Do, are we thinking about God all the time? Or are there other idols that have that we've compromised ourselves? What are the little things you the little G's that you've allowed to take your attention off of worshiping God? Praise God. Praise God. All right, now let's move on. Next point on your sheet, if you if you download the, the study guide, it says wisdom is not optional, but required. Wisdom is not optional when we talked about when we're talking about worshiping God. Wisdom is required in worshiping God. Let me show you a couple of things. First of all, I want you to look at the book of Colossians chapter three, Colossians chapter three. And we're going to look at verses 15 through 16 together. Colossians three verses 15 and 16 together. Praise God. Colossians three verses 15 and 16. Y'all bear with us for one second. Amen. All right, here we go. Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. Look at verse 15. Actually, let's, let's back up a little bit and read into it a little bit. Uh, yes, let's go back to verse... Number 12, put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. OK, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. In other words, you got to do this as, as believers. You got to be forgiving. Come on, somebody. And above all these things. Put on charity. That word charity is translated as love. Put on love. Now, you know, we want to take off stuff. No, God said put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace. Here we go. Verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Where is it going to rule? It's going to rule in our hearts. Now, let me break that down a little bit. That word peace there is, is the Greek word irene. It literally means peace, prosperity. It also means quietness and rest. 
In other words, when you get to that place of peace and prosperity, you're in quietness and you can rest. You, you don't, you're not troubled on all sides. You don't have wars going on in your mind and in your body and all over you. You got peace. Now, not necessarily the body, but you don't have enemies coming at you from all sides. You're in a place of peace. You're at peace with God and the will of God over your life. Okay. He says, but, and let the peace of God. Now that word, next word there is rule. That role, word for rule is inokio. It means to inhabit or to influence for good. That word, it says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which you are called in one body. Amen. So when he says, I'm sorry, rule means barbeo. It means to arbitrate or govern. So now watch this. As we look at this, I know this seems a little complicated, but as we look at it, it says, let the peace of God, the quietness, the, the peace, the calmness of God um, govern your heart. Now, let me let me pause there for a moment before we get into the next part. How are you going to worship God and you mad with everybody? How are you going to worship God and you have an angry spirit? You, you always operate in malice and wrath. How can you say you're worshiping God when you, you get in your own way? And for some of us, y'all, some of us are our own biggest enemy when it comes to worship. Some of us never get into a place that we worship God because we, we go around mad with everybody. We're angry. Now, the Bible tells us if somebody has offended you, you have, you have spiritual rights, scriptural rights in how to address it. Matthew 18 says you go to that person one-on-one. -on -one, and you take take if, if they don't hear you, you take another witness with you. If they don't hear them, take take another with you. They don't hear it, take them before the church. They won't hear the church. Then you just deal with them as an infidel. You just don't, you just, just be done with them. But you're free of it. See, our problem is we're angry and we and we we can't worship God because we're so bottled up with mess. We're bottled up with hatred. We're bottled up with unforgiveness. See, all those passages, the verses before that talked about how we're to love, how we're to forgive how we're supposed to govern ourselves. And then ultimately he says, let the peace of God govern your heart and your mind. Okay. Rule your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Okay. Let me go back to the, to the scripture so you can see this. He said, and let the peace of God to the which you are called ruling your hearts, which you are called in one body and be ye thankful. Okay. So in other words, when we, we get into worship, we're not even there yet because we got to get peace in us. We can't worship God. Wisdom says you can't worship God when you're mad with everybody. Oh my God, I ain't never, I've never, I'm telling y'all, I've never seen somebody cut somebody in the parking lot out and then get in the presence of God in, in three seconds. Now you may perpetrate, but you didn't get that far. It's hard to worship God. That's why the Bible even tells us, don't let the sun go down on your anger. You'd be surprised at how many people are, are mad. And then you just, the, the thing about life is you don't know if you're going to see that person again. You got to learn to release that stuff. It's not worth lingering stuff and carrying stuff from generation to generation. And now you taught that culture to your children to be mad and, and carry on with everybody. You, you just blowing up everything all the time. And then you wonder why you can't get in the presence of God. You wonder why you feel awkward when you try to worship God. It's because you have not allowed the peace of God to rule in your heart. You got to come to a place of peace with God so that you actually can worship God. How are you going to come into his gates with Thanksgiving and you coming in and mad cussing people out? Come on, somebody. Let's talk about this. this is a reality of what a lot of us deal with. We got to come to a place of peace with God. Now, that doesn't mean everyone's going to like you. That doesn't mean that you're going to be the most popular thing on the block. But you can come to a place of peace in God that it doesn't matter what anybody else does. It doesn't matter what they think. You can be at peace because God is your resting place. Oh, my God. Psalm 91 said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. You can be in a place of peace and worship God when there are hell hounds all around you. Why? Because you let that peace of God rule in your heart. Praise God. So he says it's got to rule in your heart and in your mind. Now, that word and it's notice what he says. This is powerful. He says it has to dwell. What are you, what are you talking about, Pastor Harvey? Well, go to the next verse. Go to verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Now, what's supposed to dwell in me richly? The word of Christ, okay? The word of God. So now, if I'm going to worship God, I got to come to a place of peace in my heart. And I also have to let the word of God dwell in me 
richly in all wisdom. Now, I'm going to break that down in a minute because it's powerful when you look at uh, Colossians 3 and 16 and you contrast it to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19, um, where it says that we are to allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. OK, and but look at what he says here. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. That word richly means a lot. OK, I'm not trying to be deep about it. Uh, but something's in you richly. It ain't, it's not sparingly in you. It's not saying that you memorize Jesus love me. Or uh, one of the shortest verses, John eleven thirty five, 35, Jesus well. No, you got to let the word dwell in you. That word dwell, that's the word I was referring to earlier, Enochio. It literally means inhabit or to influence you for good. So now I know when the word is dwelling in you, when I know what used to come out of you, don't come out of you anymore. That lets me know that the word of God is, is dwelling in you richly. Amen. That tells me that you just ain't got one scripture that you heard. That tells me that you in the word. Amen. How do we know we're growing? Because the word of God is dwelling in us richly in all wisdom. Now, look at that. Word tells us that wisdom is a result of the word of God dwelling in us richly. OK, the wisdom that we're seeking God's wisdom in even in worship, worshiping God with wisdom requires us having knowledge of who God is. I'll give you a perfect example of this. When, when I tell people in church, sometimes I say, come on, in your in your prayer language, if it's English, if you speak in tongues, whatever, whatever you are, wherever you at, go ahead and just begin to magnify God. Tell God, tell God something good. And I see people looking. And I see them just clapping their hands. I didn't tell you to clap. I said to open your mouth and tell God something good. Well, how are you going to know what to tell him if you don't know his word? When I say tell him something good, I'm giving you some examples. Lord, I thank you that you are my shepherd. I shall not lie. Lord, I thank you that you own the, the sheep, on a, the cattle on a thousand hills, Lord. I thank you that you're my healer and my redeemer. I thank you, Lord God, that you've redeemed me from my sins. I thank you that you bought me with a price. I thank you for the power of your name. I thank you that your name is excellent. Lord, you're awesome in all your ways. Majestic it's your name, Lord God. You're excellent, God. Lord, I thank you. See, all I'm doing is giving God his word back. God, I thank you that you watch over your word to perform it. Lord, I thank you that you shall not forsake those that those things that concern me, Lord God. You will not forsake the very works of your hand. Lord, I bless you for who you are. Lord, I thank you and I magnify you for being the God of my life. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are El Hohim, Lord God. You're El Shaddai, Lord God. You're my Jehovah Rapha. You're the God that healeth me. See, I can say these things because I've studied the word of God. But if all you're going to say, God, thank you. I thank you for waking me up. That's great. That's a great place to start. But if you're going to have wisdom and if you're going to grow in your worship, that wisdom that you need, that that how how do I magnify God? How do I exhort God? You have to study the word of God. That's only going to be found in scripture. Amen. Let me show you some more things. Sister Vonzel, you spot on. You have to study the word of God continuously. Absolutely. Let's go to the word right now. Let's look at a couple of things. Go over to uh, John. I'm sorry. Let, let's go to yeah, John chapter 14, verse 27. John 14 and 27. This is talking about the peace of God. Jesus says, peace I leave you uh, with. With you peace. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Then he goes on to talk about that how he's going to provide for us. Amen. That only comes because we know the word of God. Let's look at how we got to study this word and dwell on the word and let it rule our hearts and minds. Go over to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. One verse. Verse 5. Says, let this mind be in you, which also, which was also in Christ Jesus. Well, what was that mind? See, I, I, you know, I, I like people to give me a scripture, but I want you to tell me the whole thing. So what was this mind that was in Christ Jesus? Well, let's go to it. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself, this concurs with what we just talked about, of no reputation and took upon the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Okay. Amen. We got to know the word. Let's keep on digging. All right. I want you to stay right with us right now. Go over to the book of Psalms. I want you to go to Psalm 
Where do I want to go first? Psalm 119. I'm going to pop it up for you. Psalm 119 and verse number 98. Psalm 119, verse 98. Listen to what God says. Though through thy commandments has thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. Oh my God. I can shout right there. God said through his word, he made you wiser. He gave you wisdom, more wisdom than your enemies. Amen. God said, I'll give you wisdom, more wisdom than your enemies. They're sitting there trying to figure out why they can't take you out. It's because you're in that word and you praying and you fasting and you believe in God. God said, I'll give you wisdom through my word. But don't stop there. Let's keep on going. Psalm 19. Psalm 19. Look at verse number seven. Psalm 19, verse number seven. Praise God. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Amen. God's word brings wisdom to us. Amen. If you show me somebody who does not have an appetite for the word of God, I'll show you a person that's not very wise. The wisdom that we need to worship God comes as we learn and grow more in our relationship with God. How are you going to do that? You've got to be in the word of God. The Bible tells us in Psalm 119, how can a young man wake his, make his way pure? By heeding every word of the Lord. We got to study his word. There's no way around it. You want you want to be um, the worshiper that God created you to be? You got to be a study of the word of God. You cannot just have expressions of worship without having knowledge of worship. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's keep on going. Second Timothy chapter three. And we're going to look at verse number 15. Second Timothy three and 15. And that from a child. Now notice what he says about Timothy. Paul talking about Timothy and that from a child. Thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee what wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm telling y'all, we got to know the word. We got to know this word. One more scripture to support that. Jeremiah chapter eight, verse nine. Jeremiah chapter eight, verse nine. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? Now, what he's talking about in Jeremiah, Jeremiah said a whole lot of folk run around and think they know something. But now they shame because they have they are dismayed because they have rejected God's word. And, and then he asked the question, like, now what, what kind of wisdom they got? There's a lot of people in this world that think they're wise. But if you're rejecting the word of God, you are foolish. You, are, you, you, are, you don't have God's wisdom. I'm telling you, I've seen so many times and I've been there myself. Let me not talk about what I've seen. Let me talk about Patrick. Before Patrick really surrendered his life to God and made Jesus really the Lord of my life, I would be in church and I'm, you know, I'm educated and I think I know something. And I look, I was like, it don't take all of that. All oh, that's not necessary. That why, why are they doing all that? And then I start learning about praise and I said, oh, the Shabbat is real. Oh, the Barak is real. Oh, what they're doing is actually scriptural. I'm the one that's sitting on the side like, a, like I've been baptized in vinegar, ain't moving, won't give God glory. But see, I didn't know any better. But when I really learned who Christ was, I started looking back at how it used to be, thinking I knew something but was wise in my own eyes. But when I started studying the word of God and I saw what God really meant about worship and really what he really means about praise, it opened up a whole nother level of understanding to me. So now I don't mind running. I'll, I'll shout in the, I'll shout with anybody and, 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 and unapologetic about it because God has just been that good to me. Amen. If David could dance, why can't I dance? Come on, somebody. If, if David could praise God, why can't I praise God? Come on, somebody. If, if the men of God um, could surround the city of Jericho and the walls fell in, not because they used tanks or they used weapons or missiles, but their, their projectile was their voices in praise. Then why in the world am I sitting on the sideline watching um, something in front of me that I can take down myself if I just learn how to give God glory, honor, and praise? I'm trying to help somebody today. Praise God. Praise God. So we are called by God to be thankful. 
God never designed us to have pity parties for the rest of our lives. He designed us to be thankful. Let me show you the scripture. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 18. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 18. Now you say, well, Pastor Harvin, you talking about wisdom. What do I got to do with worship? We, oh, we building. Trust me, we'll be there in a minute. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 18 says, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you in everything, in every situation, in every circumstance, God has instructed us to give him praise, to thank him. Now, God, that doesn't make sense. Why am I supposed to thank you when I just lost a job? Why am I supposed to thank you when I'm not sure if I can pay the mortgage tomorrow? Why am I supposed to thank you? God said, in everything, give me thanks. You know what? It's just a setup. God just wants to set us up, that wants the world to see that them brothers and sisters over there, they, they something wrong with them. They different. They are peculiar people. Come on, somebody. First Peter chapter two, verse nine. They're, they're different than the rest of us. Everybody else having a pity party. They're over there giving God praise because in everything we have learned to give him thanks. Amen. And I'm telling you, when you have a culture of praise and worship, when, when praise is not just something you do occasionally, when that's your culture, worship comes easy. Praise God, because you're already living your life under the shadow of the Almighty. You're already living your life to give him glory. So therefore, your whole life becomes an expression of worship. And now worship is not just something I do as an act, but worship becomes who I am. I express my love of God because I worship God in my life living now. I hope that somebody understands that. Praise God. So let's keep going. So now Jesus says to us that we have to not negate the power of the word of God in gaining wisdom. Now, I want to show you all the correlation between wisdom, culture and worship, because I'm going to bring them all together now. Let's go back to Colossians chapter three and let's fix our attention in Colossians chapter three. And we're going to look solely at verse number 15 and 16 right now. Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. Praise God. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts and mind, hearts to, to the which also you were called in one body and be thankful. We discovered that. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. We just talked about that. Teaching, here we go. Teaching and admonishing one another in Psalms. Now we're talking about culture. I got to teach you. You got to be taught. You got to be cultivated. Teaching means to be cultivated. Come on, somebody. Teaching and admonishing one another, not just the pastor, but all of us doing good to each other, not just waiting for somebody else to fix something that ain't right. You know, you got a part in this also, my brother, my sister, because we got to do this thing together. Come on. I'm teaching and admonishing one another. How are we going to do this? One of the ways we do it, is in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in our heart, in your hearts to the Lord. Why is that so important? Well, one of the ways we know we can identify a culture is in their expressions of worship or their music. Come on, somebody. Uh, we know culture oftentimes by the music people listen to. That, that is one of the expressions of culture. Amen. And so God says, if, if your culture is to worship me, then your music ought to be teaching and admonishing one another to love me, to worship me. So now if your music ain't lining up with, with God, then you got to ask yourself, what culture are you cultivating in yourself? Oh my goodness. That was kind of good to myself. If what I'm listening to is not lining up, because remember in Deuteronomy, we told you that he said, I want you to worship me. Exodus 20, he said, worship me and me alone. Then he says, here he says, teaching and admonishing ourselves, one another, in psalms, in hymns, and spiritual songs. So the music we, we play, the stuff we listen to, is either going to cultivate a God type of worship in us, or it's going to take us away from wanting to worship God. Oh my goodness. I'm not, I'm not here to beat up anybody music. I, I, I'm not mad with your stuff. I'm just telling you what the word says. Okay. One of the tools that God has given us 
is the teaching and admonish each other in songs and spiritual songs and hymns. Amen. That's scripture. Singing with grace in our hearts to the Lord. So when we sing, we sing with grace unto the Lord. I can't sing with grace unto the Lord when I'm when I'm talking about what I'm gonna do with somebody's wife or, or I'm gonna do it with this person, I'm gonna get a hook up over there. That don't sound like grace to the Lord to me. I'm just saying, I'm just simply saying, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Now, Pastor Harvin, I hear you, but I ain't quite feeling you right now. Well, let's keep on looking. Going to Colossians chapter 4, verse number 6. Watch this. Let your speech be always with grace, season with salt, that you may know how to, ye ought to answer every man. Let what comes out of your mouth make sure it's seasoned with grace, seasoned with salt, that you will always know how to answer every man. Come on, somebody. Let what let me say it one more time because you got to get this. Because what comes out of your mouth, what you're singing, what you're listening to is cultivating. It's part of culture. And so if you have a God culture, you're cultivating worship, then the songs and everything you listen to ought to be about worshiping God. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say, well, well Pastor Harvin, is it going to send somebody to hell if they um, don't sing this songs, hymns? I'm not saying that. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Now, you, you pray about this thing and you figure it out. Praise God. I'm just simply letting you know, understand the power of the song and music, the power of culture and how culture is, is handed down. We got to be careful of what we say. That goes back to Deuteronomy 6 again. We keep going back in this circle. You, everything you, that comes out of your mouth, the words you put before your children and your family, they are cultivating something. So if you want them to be worshipers, you want them to be praises of God, then you ought to cultivate that by how you talk about God around them, by what you allow in your ear gates and what you allow in your house. You, you come in my house like, want to put some vulgarity? Oh, no, no, no. See, you got the wrong set of harvest. I don't know what harvest you're looking for. I don't know where you're going to find them at, but you're not going to find them at Six Rushwood Court. Mm -mm. See, that's not what we're cultivating here. Now, we got our issues. Lord, no, we're not a perfect people over here either. Nobody is. But that's one thing we're not going to come. You're not going to come up in this house. And, and, and destroy the culture that we've been cultivating all these years in our children and our seed. Because we want our children, we're, we're adamant that our children serve God. And that has to be cultivated. And I'm telling you, you got to be careful what you're listening to, what you're allowing um, to be surround your children. And the craziness is that sometimes, I, I, and I don't understand this, why is it that we will buy them some, some of this ungodly music and then we wonder why they don't have a consciousness to want to serve God. It's what you've been cultivating. I'm trying to help you. All right. Praise God. We're going to move on a little bit. Now, let's go back and look at how he says, let your um, songs and spiritual hymns and those things. Let's look at um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19 real quick. And I want to show you a contrast here. Notice in Ephesians 5 and 19, it sounds familiar. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing to the and making melody in your heart to the Lord. That sounds awfully familiar to what we just read in Colossians, but it's talking about something a little bit different in Ephesians now. Let's go back and, and get some context. Let's back up to Ephesians um, 5, verse 17. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. In other words, operate in wisdom. There it goes. And be not drunk with wine where it is in excess but be filled with the spirit. Now notice in Colossians three, um, Paul talks about um, being full of the word. He talks about um, being rich in, in the word and wisdom from the word. But in, in Ephesians, he says, be full of the spirit. So now this tells me something. If I'm going to truly um, be full of the spirit, I also got to be full of the word. Those two passages go together. How do we know? Because the glue is the result that they both carry. The glue is when you follow the spirit, when you got the Holy Ghost, when you follow the spirit of God, um, 
You will speak to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Okay, because you're full of the Spirit. But watch this. But when you're full of the Spirit and you're full of the Word, guess what you're going to do? You're going to do Colossians 3 and 16. Sound familiar? Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. See, that's how the two got to go together. You show me somebody that's got a lot of word, but don't have. See, you can have word, but don't have worship. It's because you're not full of the spirit. So if you really going to be a worshiper, my brother, my sister, you got to know who you worshiping. You got to know the word, but you also got to have the spirit of God in you. Now, let me take you where I want to take you. Now, let's go over to John chapter four. John chapter four. Because this woman, the Samaritan woman that Jesus meets at the well. Notice what Jesus never told her that she was wrong to worship. She did, he just told her she was ignorant in her worship. John chapter 4. Let me pop this up for you all. And we're going to scroll on down to verse number 17. Verse 16. Jesus said unto her, Go call your husband and come here. <laughs> the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, you right. You don't have a husband. Um, for the, You've had five husbands. And he whom you are with now, that ain't your husband. In that saith thou truly. The woman said unto him, sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Oh, now I'm a prophet because I called your card. See, what Jesus does here, he gets to the heart of the matter. He gets to the disconnect between why she really can't worship God um, because her life living is not lining up with someone who can really worship God. And so we're going to keep going. We, we ain't there yet. Look at verse 20. Our father, look at what she says. She, she has, she has a, her own methodology of where she has her religiosity about worship based upon what her fathers did. Mama did it. Daddy did it. Granddaddy did it. Look at what she says. Our fathers worship in this mountain. Mind you that this is a Samaritan woman. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, here it goes, you worship, ye, ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Now look, quick little history. Many of y'all have heard this before, so this, let me just get this out for those that may not know. The Samaritans were considered half-breeds because um, in times when the, when the people of God, the Jewish people, were taken into captivity, um, those that remained, uh, the, they intermarried with, with the people of that region. And so they were always looked upon as half-breeds. They actually had um, worshipped many of the same principles, but they had compromised worship also in that they looked at... Um, Gerizim and the different places that they, as their place to worship. I believe it's Gerizim. I might be misquoting that one. But the Jews looked at them as half-breeds because they were intermarried and intermingled with some of the heathen people around them. And so they had a lot of spirit in their worship. The Samaritans did. They, they, they were passionate in worship, but they were ignorant in worship. So they worshiped with spirit, but they did not worship with word. You got to hear this. And so the Bible says that Jesus came in and said, we Jews, we, we know what we worship. You don't know what you're worshiping because the Jews had knowledge of the place to worship. They had word, but they were lacking in spirit. OK, so let's look at how Jesus puts all these together. Notice that he's trying to get us to understand that there's a culture that has to come out. If your culture is you memorize Bible verses, but you never lift your hands up. You, you, you don't have any passion for God, um, that's not going to cut it. If your culture is you run around the church and you and you, and you you holler all the time, but you don't know what you're hollering about, that's not going to cut it. God is looking for a, a, a culture that's based upon the wisdom of God and that we're wise in our worship of him. Let me show it to you. Go back into John chapter 4. Look at the word of God. Verse number 23. Jesus says, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father. How? In spirit 
they got Ephesians 5, 19 in them. But also in truth, they got Colossians 3 and 16. Glory to God. So God says, I need you to have passion, but I also need you to have knowledge. And when you show me a brother or sister that have passion for God, that's based upon knowledge, I'll show you a brother or sister that can stand against anything the devil bring at him. You show me a brother or sister that loves God, um, not only for what he did in their life, but he lo they love God because they know the word of God and they know what he will do. I'll show you somebody the devil cannot defeat. You show me a brother or sister that can not only quote scripture, but live scripture. I'll show you a brother or sister that can worship God in spirit and in truth. You show me a brother or sister that when adversity comes to their house and when things go wrong in their life, they don't stop coming to church. They don't curse God. They, they stand on the word of God. They say, uh, you know what? All that they say, just like Job, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait until my change come. I'm going to continue to worship God. I'm going to worship him while I'm waiting. I'm about to preach a sermon in a couple of weeks on that. Y'all get ready for it. I'm going to worship him while I'm waiting because I know that God is going to come through for me. That's how that's what it means for us to be true worshipers and worship in the wisdom of God. We have to be wise about we worship. There's so many things out there, y'all, that we can get off track and begin to worship. But even in church, even in church, we have to worship God with wisdom. It, you're, you're not wise because you sit there and never, and never tell God, thank you. That's not wisdom. Common sense even tells us that if someone has done something good for you, you, you take the time and you thank them. Common sense even tells us if somebody opens a door for you, you look back at them and you say, thank you. Well, my God, how many doors has God opened in your life? And have you told him thank you? How many times has God made ways for you? And have you looked back to God and said, Lord, I thank you. Not look back to him, just look at him and say, Lord, thank you. How many times has God brought you before his presence? Glory to God. And you didn't even thank him. You know what? Can just think about this for a second. Think about this like this. Think about if you got invited um, to a king's house. Glory to God. And the king said, well, you said, well, well, I can't afford to, to get there. I don't have the, the financial means to get there. Well, the king says, no problem. You ain't got to pay for it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send somebody to come get you. I'm going to send somebody to come get you. Now, the only way you will get into the gates of the palace is that you got to come in with the driver I sent for you. Glory to God. Now, what person in their right mind would someone, if they gave you access to them, they sent for you, they came and got you, they brought you before their presence. What person in their right mind would look at that king and not say thank you? What person in their right mind would not look at and tell the driver thank you? Well, can I peep something for y'all real quick? I know I'm supposed to be talking about the wise men, but I feel the Holy Ghost right up in here. I'll get to that next week. Look, can I just help somebody understand something? You were lost in a world of sin. I was lost in a world of sin. I did not have a way to get to God's palace. I did not have a way to get into the presence of God again. When Adam and Eve messed up, they implemented death. And death said we were separated from our place in God. God said, I love them too much to let them stay separated. I love them too much to let them go down like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to send my driver. I'm going to send my son, Jesus. I'm going to send him into the earth realm. We celebrating Christmas. Uh, I'm going to send him through a virgin. Uh, he's going to be born through a virgin. He's going to have to go through some things just like they did. Uh, but I'm sending my son, Jesus, to go get those people that I love so much that I'm willing to send him and sacrifice him to give them access to come back to me. And now when when they come before me, they don't have to come ashamed. They, they don't have to come saying that, what are you doing here? Who let you in? I got my son at the right hand saying he's with me. She's with me. Uh, interceding for us, giving us access to the father again. What person in their right mind would not tell that king, thank you? What person in their right mind would not say, Lord, I thank you for giving me access? Uh, I'm not praising God for the car. I'm not praising God for the house. Some people get it twisted. I'm not praising God for money. It ain't about money to me. It's about principle. I'm praising God because he came and he got me and he gave me access back to my heavenly father. 
Father. And not only did he give me access, but he said, I want you to stay this time. I got a mansion prepared for you in glory that's got your name on it. And you mean to tell me with all the knowledge I have of what he's already done for me, with the wisdom that I've gained from learning the word of God and the passion I have for God, you mean to tell me I'm supposed to act like God's just some quiet person someone the devil is a liar i'm too wise not to worship him now can somebody just put in the timeline right now i'm too wise not to worship god oh my god we want to talk about somebody else but are you wise enough to realize that god's been good to you i know you're going through pain right now i know this is a difficult time of year but are you wise enough to recognize that, that even in the midst of what you're going through god has still been good to you oh my god the wisdom to worship god is found in the word uh, i know you're missing your loved one right now but let me give you some of the wisdom that allow you to worship to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord uh, i know you worship you missing your loved one right now and it seems like this is a hard time of the year but let me give you some wisdom that will propel you in the worship uh, the bible said oh death where is your sting and oh grave where is your victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be unto god who has given us the victory victory. That's what propels us in the worship. Uh, the wisdom of the word of God will propel you to worship God. Uh, that's why that same passage tells us in 1 Corinthians, oh my God, my God. He said, therefore be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord, uh, it takes wisdom to worship God. Oh my God. Because the devil will try to slap you around with stuff. Oh, but when you're wise in the word of God, uh, you can still give God praise no matter what it looks like because there's wisdom in the word for your situation. Uh, you just lost your job and you can still give God praise because he said, the Lord is your shepherd. You shall not lack. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to, but you can give God praise right there on that alone because there's wisdom in worshiping God. Uh, are you a wise worshiper? Or are you just somebody just wait for everything to go right? Oh, no, no, no. I've been through too much. I had to lose too many things things in my life. Uh, had too many struggles to get through. And in, in the midst of everything, God sent his word and there was wisdom that allowed me to keep on worshiping through my tears. Uh, keep on worshiping through the trial. Keep on worshiping through the tribulation. I don't know who I'm talking to. Oh my God, my God. God says you got to be a wise worshiper. Don't you let those people steal your joy, make you think you foolish for giving God praise. I know what season it is. I know what you just went through. I know how you feel in your flesh, but you got to pull this worship from outside of your flesh. This got to come from a place of a relationship with God. You got to pull this worship out of your spirit, man. You got to pull this worship out of your knowledge of God and say, I will yet give you glory and I will yet give you praise. You have been too good to me. I got to worship you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, God, for the wisdom to worship you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for the wisdom to worship you, Lord God. Oh, my God, help us to be wise worshipers, Lord God. Help us to be wise in our worship of you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Come on, right where you at right now, just take a few minutes. This, this ain't nobody's show. This ain't about entertainment. Take a few minutes and just lift your hands and just give God glory. Just worship him for who he is in your life. Come on, somebody. Make the make your house, shift the atmosphere. Glory to God. You've had the wrong culture in your house too long. God says tonight he begins to shift the atmosphere in your house because you are going to become the worshiper you were created to be. I dare you to lift your hands and, and just begin to magnify in your house. Let them think you crazy in the next room. Let them talk about you like you didn't lost your mind. Begin to shift the atmosphere. Cultivate a spirit of worship in your house, even in this season, right now and right here tonight. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're an awesome God. You're an awesome God. Your word that it be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you are worthy 
to be praised, Lord God. Lord, I'd be a fool if I didn't tell you thank you. I would be a fool if I didn't adore your holy name. I would be a fool if I couldn't lift my hands and say, Lord, I appreciate you, God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. 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 How wise is your worship? You got to be wise and worship God. God wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. No shame about it. Unashamed, unapologetically, just giving him glory. But brothers and sisters, this worship I'm talking about, it's not just in what comes out of my mouth. It's in how we live our lives. I know we all have a story. We all have a past. And can I be real with you? Sometimes I lose it myself. But the reality is I've got to be a wise worshiper. There's some things I can't allow in my body anymore because I'm going to be a wise worshiper. There's some things I don't entertain. I don't I don't hang out with because I want to be wise because I don't want anything to get in the way of me being able to worship God. When I lift my hands, I want him to receive my praise and my adoration. I'm not doing this because I'm a pastor. I'm not doing this because uh, anybody's watching. Let me tell you something. You got to learn how to give God glory when it's just you and God all by yourself. Because there's going to come a point in your life. Nobody's going to be there but you and God. You got to know how to get in his presence. It's time that we become wise worshipers. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord God. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, whatever your song is, just begin to lift it to God. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Well, praise God. My intent was to get to talking about the Magi. And the wise, wise man. But I believe God has taken us in a different direction tonight to see that we've got to be wise and worship him in spirit and in truth. Bow your head right where you're at. Let me pray with you. Father, thank you for your people. Thank you, oh God, for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that fills us. Thank you for your word that richly can flourish inside of us, Lord. We bless you for who you are and what you're doing. God, we want to worship you in spirit and in truth. We want to worship you because you've been so awesome and so good. You're worthy. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be adored. And Father, we worship you. God, whatever it is that's been in the way of separating us from being able to get in your presence and worship you, God, remove those scales. Remove those blinders, Lord God. Remove that pride. Remove remove that haughty spirit, Lord God. Remove that anger. Remove that malice. Remove that unforgiveness. Lord God, whatever it is that's been getting us disconnected from being able to get into your presence and worship you. Make us wise, Lord God. Beyond our years, Lord God, make us wise so that we recognize the temps of the enemy to get us off track and to distort and distract us from you. But God, help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, I speak to that person whose body needs healing tonight. I speak to that person who's going through bereavement, Lord God. I speak to that person, Lord God, who doesn't know whether they're going to have a job tomorrow. Lord, I speak to that person who's been dealing with depression and didn't want to say anything about it. But Lord, you knew about it and you're calling it out right now. You still matter to God. God is going to heal you of that. 
I speak to that person, Lord God, that has been given a diagnosis that they can't handle. Lord, I God, I thank you that you're able to do exceeding and abundantly above all we may actually think according to the power of God that you placed inside of us. Now, God, we ask that you would move on their behalf, that you would bring healing to their body, their mind, Lord God, that you would heal that emotion, that emotional trauma, Lord God, that has my brother, my sister logged up and blocked up and clogged up, that they can't, they're so bottled up, they can't worship you, Lord God. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you give them clarity and understanding and that your word would penetrate them and that by your spirit, you would open access to them, Lord God. Heal, God, as only you can heal. Deliver, Lord God, as only you can deliver. We thank you. We magnify you. We adore you and we praise you, Lord Jesus. Even now, in Jesus' name, we call it done. Amen. My brother, my sister, before I let you go, I just want to know, are you saved? Have you given your life to Jesus? Have you surrendered your all to him? If I'm talking to you tonight and you have not confessed Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to simply put in the comment section or whatever feed that you're on, I just want you to simply put, Pastor Harvin, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to give my life to Jesus. This is all you got to do. Put, Pastor, I want to be saved. If you're looking for a church home, if you're looking for a church to become a part of, I want you to put in the comment section, Pastor, I want to join JBC. Just that simple. No slides, no, no, just that simple. God loves you. You matter to God and you matter to us. God wants to save you. He has a plan for your life. You are not an accident. You, you're not a circumstance or a happen chance. No, you matter to God. And it's time that you give your life to him and serve him. If I'm talking to you and you and you listen to the Bible study and you say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. But I've just been kind of straggling. I've just been kind of doing my own thing, living for myself. And I want to get serious with God. I want you, my brother, my sister, put in the comment section, Pastor, I want to draw closer to God. I want to get serious with God. If I'm talking to you, you know, you know the Spirit of God does not make any mistakes. If I'm talking to you, I want you to respond right now. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. If you have prayer requests, I want you to put them in the comment section. You can also send them to prayer at jbchopkins.org. God is still healing. God is still delivering. Make no mistake about it. He's still King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He still loves us. Amen. He is the healer of all of us. Glory to God. Praise God. Well, I'm getting ready to let you go. Thank you so much. I believe that after what God has done tonight, I believe that we need to look at our, ourselves. And I believe that this is an opportunity for all of us to sow a seed tonight. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm not going to ask you to sow a seed directly in the Jerusalem Baptist Church. I'm going to ask you to sow a seed into our community nonprofit arm called JBC Cares. This is what the Lord's lead me to do. I want you to sow a seed in the JBC Cares tonight. This is a way that you can make an impact on those that are in our community. We're meeting needs beyond the four walls of Jerusalem. And this is an opportunity for you to sow a seed. Now, if you want to sow your seed somewhere else, the Lord is directing you, be governed by the Spirit of God. But right now, I want those that are willing to sow a seed tonight in the JBC Cares. I'm going to simply give you the uh, the address that you can sow to. It is jbccares.org. Go to the website, jbccares.org, and you'll find information on how you can sow a seed tonight. Praise God. That goes into a nonprofit 5013C organization um, that is helping meet needs, feeding hundreds of people every single week, meeting needs in our community, there for people when they need us. 
Amen. Going to be blessing our seniors on Sunday afternoon. Praise God. But thank you so much. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. It's been a blessing to me. Thank you for spending this time in the word of God with us tonight. As we get ready to leave, this will remind you on this coming Friday, First Lady will be teaching the women at 810. Praise God. Sister Deja, First Lady will be live at 810 doing an awesome job teaching the women of God. I'll be teaching our men's Bible study, Man Up Bible study, on Friday at 8 o'clock on Facebook and also on the church website. So join us again as we continue to grow in the grace of God and study his word. Thank you so much. God bless you. Now lift your hands where you're at. I know you ain't ready to leave yet. I'm not either. But I declare after I get off this phone with y'all, I got to get off this off this speed with you all. I got to get on my face for a moment on this floor and just begin to magnify God that much more. Lift those hands to the Lord. Now may the grace of Almighty God, the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, rest rule and abide with us all now, henceforth and forevermore. Father, thank you for the seeds that are being sown even now in Jesus' name. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless y'all. Remember, be a wise worshiper as you worship the Lord. Hallelujah.